It's the love that you have for one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the thing that really marks us, that we belong to God, that we belong to Christ, is the love that we have for one another. And won't you admit that love is kind of falling short, <laughs> waxing cold? Yes. In the world, yes. but it ought not be in the church. Love should be the place where you could come, the church should be the place where you could come and find strong love. Amen. Amen. Love for your hurts, love for your pains, love for your disappointments. You should be able to find love in, 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 you, in, in any other place. You should be able to find love in the church amongst <laughs> believers. Yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. So, if love is the distinguishing mark of a true believer, it is because of conflict and confusion about spiritual gifts that Paul was writing about the preeminence of love. He wrote the letter to confirm to solve some disagreements and some issues that they were having over doctrine, over ordinances, and, and those things. But he was saying, look, uh, you might have a strong opinion about this, you might have a strong opinion about that, amen? But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the love is supposed to be the thing that takes over right. and keeps us together. And Mount Zion and, 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 and everyone else, uh, love is the thing that should be, love should be the most important thing, amen, Amen. Uh, amen. in our lives. Yeah. Because love can, can solve a whole lot of disagreements. Love can conquer uh, or cover a multitude of faults, multitude of sins. Love can cover that. And, didn't he, and, 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 and while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And somebody once said that it was love that kept Jesus on the cross. Right. It was love. It wasn't the nails. Mm. Amen? All right. mm. It was love. Yes. And so ought not we, we, the way he loved us, ought not we love one another? Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, love one another as I have loved you. Mm. Amen? Amen? So love is very important, especially in maintaining uh, stronger relationships. Mm -hmm. People who have not the ability to love, it's hard for them to be in relationships. Amen? Amen. Uh, so Paul wants to take us a little further in this, and he wants to teach the church at Corinth uh, the preeminence. Now the preeminence means that love is the most important thing in every believer's life because love is the essence of God. Now, so if love is the essence of God, then love it has to be has to have preeminence first place, amen. With power in our lives, we can accomplish much with love, much more than we can accomplish with hate. That's right, amen. You, you with me? Yeah. With you. We, we got to kind of go through this. I want to describe what, what what Paul was leading us with. Love never fails. Yes. We say that God never fails. We say that God can't fail. Amen? And here Paul is saying, well, there's something else that can't fail either. That's love. Because God is love. So that's the preeminence. That's the importance of love. And if you get anything out of your walk with Christ, yes. you must get that you are to love your neighbor yes. as you love yourself. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right, we're going to get a little deeper. Because Thank love is the most important thing in every believer's life. Because it is the essence of God. So that makes it important. So what do we read in 1 John, not the Gospel of John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Can someone please stand and read that. Read it loud. God is love, and he dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God in him. God is love. Amen. And he that what? Dwelleth. That dwelleth in love. Dwelleth where? Dwelleth in God. And what else? God? And God in him. Mm, that's the essence of God. So if you got you, if you're supposed to be godly, then you're supposed to be lovely. Amen? Amen. 
I saw they know, not because of your title, not because of the car you drove up in here in, right. not because of the fancy clothes you got on or the way you talk, but eloquence, the way that people will know that you have God in you, which means you're his disciples, mm -hmm. is love. Yes. Show me the God in you, and I'll show you the love in you. All right. Because love is God. All right. Amen. 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 And so we need to ask God to teach us, Lord, teach me how to love better. Because some of us have been in relationships and, and how we grew up even when we may have not grown up in a loving home. And so we've never really learned how to love. You know, agape love. We, 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 agape love is unconditional love. And that's what Paul is saying. Unconditional love never fails. So but some of us have not grown up in those type of environments and we've never been taught to love. So we operate in chaos. We operate in uh, confusion, drama, amen? Because we really don't know how to love. And I'm telling you, you, you're in bad shape if you fall in love with somebody who don't know how to love you back. That's right. Come on. Yeah. You're right. Jesus. But God is love. Yes, so where do we learn? If, if the God is the essence of love, then where should we learn love from? From God. God. Yes. Amen? Amen. For God so loved love the world that he gave his only begotten son. son. What an example. What an example. So the most important thing in a believer's life is love. Mm -hmm. If you highlight something, highlight that. That's the subject of this lesson. Mm -hmm. The most important thing in a believer's life is love. Mm -hmm. I don't care how important you are. I don't care how important you look. I don't care how important you think you are. In the believer's life, and I said believers, it's love. And it's love as described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Because it is what makes us like God. Love is more important than any spiritual gift. Uh-oh. Because the gifts are only for earthly life. Somebody say earthly life. Earthly life. The gifts are only for earthly life. And it will, and the love will never end because it is the essence of the eternal God. If love is the essence of God, God is eternal, isn't he? Yes, he is. Then if, if love is the essence of God and God is eternal and won't die, can't die, then love will never will either. So that's what makes it an important, more important than spiritual gifts because spiritual gifts are for just the earthly life. They're going to cease. Mm -hmm. There will be no need for earth for spiritual gifts in heaven. Amen. Amen. That's going to stop right there at the grave. But love continues on with, with, with God in eternity. Because God is love. I know that's kind of technical and kind of <laughs> deep, but I just want to you get this. As you compare love with God, because the Bible says that. The Bible doesn't say God is a lot of things. But what the Bible says God is, you need to pay attention to that. And one of the things the Bible says that God is, is shows us the character, love. he's love. He's love. That's right. You can go to him in the midnight hour. Yes, you can. He'll, he'll, he, he, he's never too busy. Come on, somebody. That's right. You could, you could mess up. He'll, he'll, he'll take you back if you just come yes, and, and, and repent. And Lord, I'm sorry. Amen. Yes, he'll, he'll take you back, won't he? Yes, he will. Amen. And he will give you his best because that's what love does. Yeah. He will spend time with you because that's what love does. Right. He wants to be around you because that's what love does. So love is God. That's right. yes. And if you want love, God. God. find God. Find God. That's it. Yes, Jesus is love. Yes. And when Keith Buxton played that. Yes, he did. And the saxophone. Yes, he did. I will never forget that. I will never because forget that. Because you, Jesus. how powerful the assertion is That's right. that he is love. And once you know, amen, that you know he loves you because you know that you've been walking with him for a while and he has shown up because love is what love does. Right. And you know that as you look back over your life, amen, when, when people gave up on you, but yes. God did not give up on you. He, 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 he kept you, amen, Thank you, God. through the good and through the bad. In your good right. season, in your Man, ugly season, in yes. your messed up season, he was there all the time. Thank loving you, Jesus. you like nobody else can. 
So love is God. Thank you, God. And you need to carry that love in you and not let anybody separate you from that love, which is found in Christ Jesus. Amen. I know he loves me because he's shown me he has loved me over and over again. As a matter of fact, he has loved me before I was able to love myself. Come on now. Can I get a witness? He, he's that kind of God. That's right. Yes. He is. Thank you. His love is the essence of the eternal love. So let's look at it. Because Paul says that first, love is more important than prophecies. Yes. Take your notes. That's the first point. Love is more important than prophecies. So I want to talk a little bit about how important prophecies really are. But keep in mind, as we go, as we talk about prophecies, keep in mind that love is even more greater than prophecies. And so what can be more greater than prophecies? Isn't that the way God moves and operates? But love is the reason. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, love is the reason for the season. That's right. <laughs> Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. And unto you is born this day in the city of David right. a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. So it's all about love. Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Love which is timeless. Love is timeless. It's more important because prophecies, they, uh, Paul writes, shall fail. The word translated prophecies is prophetia, Greek, prophetia, which means the speaking forth of the mind and the counsel of God. The speaking forth of the mind and the counsel of God. It refers to the gift of prophecy or that which is spoken by a prophet. A prophet today uh, speaks truth. Uh, a prophet today speaks for the mind and the counsel of God, uh, as revealed in the Word. And you got to be careful there because there's a lot of false prophets that are born out in the world today. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, maybe we should have put there a true prophet. A true prophet. A true prophet mm -hmm. speaks for the mind and the counsel of God, a true prophet. as revealed in the Word. Amen. Amen. So the word prophet basically means one who speaks for another. He speaks for God. For example, when, when, when God uh, tries to, when Moses, excuse me, when Moses tries to get God to change his mind about sending him back to Egypt, he uses his inability to speak well, you know, to speak. You know, he had a stuttering problem, a stammering tongue. He tried to get God to change his mind. Amen. He said, well, I can't speak. So God tells him in Exodus 7 and 1, Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. He will speak for you. Amen. He'll be your mouthpiece. Uh, but he who prophesies, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. Can somebody stand please and read what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 3. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Okay, so there it is. Thank you, Brother Smith. Paul describes three functions of a prophet. He, he, he describes three functions that a prophet has. Can someone give us what those three functions are? Edification, exhortation, exhortation and comfort. All right. So now, watch this. First, a prophet speaks for edification. And the Greek word for edification is okodome, okodome. And it refers to the act of constructing a building, amen? So here it is used figuratively, referring to the building up of believers or promoting spiritual growth. So a prophet, a prophecy is supposed to uh, edify, it's supposed to build up believers, not tear down. Now, sometimes the truth is hurt, the truth hurts. And we're supposed to speak truth to power because we speak for God. Amen. But God never reveals something or brings a truth to you to tear you down. Maybe to tear you down, but to tear down things that you don't need to be uh, on you anymore. So a word can tear that down, but God don't leave you in a torn down condition. 
He also leads you in a upbringing. Can I get a witness? Amen. He's going to leave you torn down. So, yes, you might speak a word, but you got to speak a word in love. That's right. Which means you are speaking it not to just tear me down. Right. You are speaking it to build, to edify, to construct, to build me back up. All right. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 We, we sometimes, you know, we, we're just good at tearing ourselves down sometimes. That's right, now. Amen? That's right. Sometimes we, we are worst critic. We tear yes. ourselves down. So by the time we come to the church house, we want to hear a word. Amen. If you're going to tear me down because, you know, maybe I need to be torn down for some of the things that's going on in my life. Uh -huh. Maybe that needs to be torn down. But, definitely but uh, so that other things can live. Yes. We need to crucify the flesh. We need to have some of that stuff crucified, amen? Amen. But amen. so that we can be built up in the spirit. That's right. That's right. Amen. And so we come to church, and if a prophet is going to speak a word, then he has to also, as Brother Smith read in the scripture, speak a word of exhortation mm -hmm. to build us up, to construct us. Secondly, a prophet speaks what? Exhortation. exhortation. And that's paraclesis. Paraclesis. That's the Greek word, paraclesis. Which means to be to encourage the discouraged. Amen. Amen. Somebody say that. To encourage. To encourage. The discouraged. The discouraged. Amen. When was the last time you spoke a word of exhortation? Or are you just good at tearing down? Have you encouraged somebody who was discouraged? Have you noticed that we live in a very discouraging world? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And a prophet or a preacher is to lead the way in the area of exhortation. Talk about prophecy. A prophet is supposed to edify and exhort. But it also, also watch this, not just a prophet or a preacher should be an exhortationer, but every believer. Because exhortation should be a large part of every believer's ministry. Every believer is commanded to encourage and build up others. It's right there in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. It says, it's not there, but it says, build each other up. Encourage one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. How do we encourage and build up others? First, always be friendly. I said, always be friendly. He who wants friends to first show himself to be friendly. Friendly. This begins by greeting people with a smile. All right. I'm trying to help somebody today. <laughs> greeting people with a smile. Yes. Which is a great encouragement and build up. That's right. Amen. Amen. You ever just was having a bad day and somebody, or do you know people who got that way of smiling, they yes. can just light up the room? Yes. Every believer should have that. Because you have the you should have the love of God flowing. And sometimes you gotta catch yourself because the devil will talk to you too. I like that. Nah, don't don't smile. That's right. Say something nasty. Because uh -huh. you know what they did to you last time. That's right. So say something nasty. Amen. 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 But if you know that God's got you, God, God's got your back. And no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Amen. You can smile at everybody. That's right. That's right. Yes, you can. Thank you, you, God. Can do me no harm. Yes, you can. Thank, Thank you, Lord. You, you, you can't. So, and I'm going to pray for you because obviously you need prayer. That's right. Amen. I'm not going to respond to you because vengeance is mine saying the Lord. Look, the Thank Lord, you. the Lord is saying, I saw what they did. Yeah. Yes. Lord, Thank I, you, Lord. You ain't got to say anything. Oh, Just man. smile. Thank you. Now, are you getting this? Y'all get this? Yes. Right. Or oh, you yeah. just sound good? No, we get this. Oh, are you really getting it? We really get this. All right. Yes. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. We sing like a song here, Zion. This is how I fight my battle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fight my battle. This is how. This is how. I fight my battle. That's right. This is how. I fight with smiles. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Exhortation. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll pray for you. Pray. And I really mean it when I say it. That's right. And then I keep it moving. That's right. Yep. Keep on moving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're not going to get me 
Inequity. To go down to that level. Come on now. Amen. What did you say? Then, right? Somebody observing us might not be able to tell who the believer is. That's right. Teach. If I'm down there arguing with you and all this other stuff. That's right. Yes. Smile. 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 The whole world Amen. Because you know, misery loves company. Oh, yes. thank you. And um, you, you, your, your smile just says that you know what? In my heart, everything is all right. Yeah. Yes. I'm all right with me and my God. All right. Amen. I, I, I'm trying to treat people right. All is well. Amen? That's right. So look, uh, 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 every believer is commanded to encourage and build up others. And not just those who are able, you know, the nice, the nice believers. That's right. <laughs> Everybody. Not just those who are lovable, but the ones who are also unlovable. That's right, now. Come on. Those because to God, they are not unlovable. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's some good in, in, in people, and sometimes a smile can just break them down. Yes, <laughs> the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. That's right. Sometimes that's all that's needed. You just you just fight them in the spirit, amen. You yes, fight them with a smile, and they won't know how to respond. That's right. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Because you didn't want to get it going. Yeah, they do. Don't give them the benefit of getting it going. Mm -hmm. I don't go there no more. Yeah. I don't go there. I don't, I don't, I don't speak right like, now. That ain't me, and you will not get me to act out of character because I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. I'm walking in love. Thanks, so that's a peaceful place to be. It is. Amen. 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 Jesus. So, smile. Mm -hmm. That's one way to encourage and build up others. Second, pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Including your church leadership. Yes, sir. Can I get an amen for the amen. term? Amen. Yeah, you need to pray. Amen. 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 Paul says, what in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 25? Can someone stand and please read what Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 25? Brethren, pray for us. Mm. Mm. I said, that's, all, that's the whole verse. That's, that's going to be easy to remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. brethren, pray for us. This is Paul saying. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul in leadership. Yeah. He's saying, Look, pray for oh, us. Come on. If Paul needed prayer, no, don't, don't you think Pastor G That's right. and the church leadership yes, need prayer? Yeah, we do. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to my, pray for me. Yeah, we do. Let me think what Paul said. Brethren yes. and sister, pray for me. Pray for me. Yes. Y'all heard me say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pray for me. We do. Thank you. We do. Don't don't tear me down. Trying to be all that God would have me to be. Right, but I'm Amen. Yes. So pray for me. When you pray for the encouragement of others, don't forget your family and your friends. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I, I think somebody you. needs to hear that. Today. I need to hear that. Yeah, don't 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 forget them. Lord. I ain't talking about the ones you get along with, or just the ones you get along with. Oh, the ones you don't get I'm talking about the ones that are difficult to get along with. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I know what you're the talking about. The ones that are difficult to oh, come yeah. on. Sometimes oh, yeah. love is not always easy. It, it is not easy. Some, some, sometimes, it's some, with some folks, it is difficult, it is very difficult. to love them. Yes, it is. But it is not impossible. No, it's not. Amen? Sometimes you got to love from a distance. Oh, yeah. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Sometimes you got to love them and this. Yeah. Why did you keep around? I, I, you know why I didn't come around? Because I love you. I love you. And I'm going to keep loving you. Yes. Because right. every time I <laughs> go around, <laughs> it's, it's something. That's right. Come on. So I want to keep the peace. 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 I know I just helped somebody right there. Yes, you did. All the way live. <laughs> Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Also, encourage <laughs> others by being a good listener. By being a good listener. Are you a good listener? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Most people feel greatly encouraged just knowing someone loves them enough to listen okay. with a compassionate ear. Oh, yeah. Yes. Because you know what? Discouraged believers are stunted in their spiritual growth. Therefore, often the first step in building up believers is to encourage them by simply listening to their hurts, their frustrations, and their fears. Hallelujah. 
Gotcha. But not only does a prophet speak for edification and exhortation, also, Brother Smith read that thirdly, he speaks to comfort. Yes. yes. Thank you. Comfort. Mm -hmm. A prophet speaks to console those who are hurting and or grieving. Come on, Pastor. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. A prophet, one, one, one word from the Lord. That's it. Amen. Sometimes it's just a simple, Sister Lee is just, everything is going to be all right. All right now. People write me all the time on Facebook. I mean, I have a huge following. Those who know, watch me on Facebook. Y'all know, I got a huge, I'm talking about, i reach reached 20 million people per month on Facebook, on social media. 20 million. I believe you. All over this world. People write to me all the time. Pastor G, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. Hey Amen. So much so that I had to get people, I got people from around the world that some of them I've never met, but they helped me in the ministry because that's how huge it is. I got someone from Africa. I got a sister from Brazil. I got a couple of uh, our brothers and sisters from here in the United States. Amen. All right. We have one down in the Bahamas that helped me with the amount of people that come and just need a little encouragement. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. My posts go out and it reaches thousands of people and it encourages a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people write to me with their personal stuff to tell me like how the post helped them, mm -hmm. how that word. That, that prophetic word or whatever it was, how it helped them. Yes. And sometimes all it takes sometimes is just to say thank you, thank you. and let them know that everything is going to be yeah, all right. right. Amen. And right. sometimes you can just you can make it a, a day a, a little while longer because somebody gave you a, a word of encouragement Absolutely. and then they also thank you for just taking the time. Thank you. Amen. That's Amen. It. Thank you, Good Pastor. Time. You took the time. I didn't even know. I didn't even think. That a man like that you didn't have all these followers, I didn't even think you'd write back to me. Yeah, come on now. Hallelujah. I didn't even think you would. Thank you. And that's something. But Amen. it all only time, only thing it may take is just for listening here. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And a word. And always thank you for writing to me. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Amen. I ain't saying I'm all this. I ain't, I'm not wow. saying that just to blow, to say that. Because I'm nothing without God. That's right. But I understand the power. Of just a word of encouragement. Thank you, now. Thank you. You do that. Just Thank you. a word of encouragement. Or a smile. Yeah. Y'all do it. Uh -huh. Sometimes after church on Sunday, I'm drained. But y'all just want to tell me, or you want a hug or something like that. It's a hug. I will get all the way drained, you know. Yeah. But I will give y'all what you need. You sure will. I will give you a word of encouragement. And we thank Because hearing it from certain people, especially leadership, can I get a witness? That's right. It's, it, it helps. It does. Yes. And I understand that. Yes. It's different from if Deacon Bailey said, uh, God bless you, if Deacon Bailey said it was all right. Some people want to hear their pastor say that. Okay. Amen. Come on, it's pastor. It's different from when if, if Deacon Bailey or one of my deacons go and, and visit somebody in the hospital. Some people just want to see the man of God show up. That's right. right. Come on now. You took the time. You did. Come on down to this hospital. Come you took on. the time to come to Brookfield. You took the time to come to Northeast Church, amen, for, the, for my mama's uh, service. Sometimes people just want to hear and see a word of encouragement from the pastor. Amen. Right. Yes. Yes. And it really comes from every Zion name. Yes. You ought to be able to have a word of encouragement for somebody. Yes. But that's what I teach. You teach it. That's what I teach the followers on, on, on Facebook as I do. Do unto others. That's right. Come on, Pastor. You taught that. Yeah. Do unto others. You're doing well. There's power in that. Yes. That's that's. Aren't we glad that we, we have that? Yeah. You know, it's you just, me. All I do is think about what that there was somebody there for me. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. I ain't always been encouraged. That's right. There's been a time even in ministry. Oh yeah. I've been very discouraged. I could have believed that. Yes. Yeah. I ain't uh, sometimes I don't want to get out of my car. That's right. Uh, go some, go to the beach. Just chill out. Don't even go to church today. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah. Come. Yeah. When I'm walking in, here we are. And there's somebody. <laughs> you know, Pastor G, we love you. Yeah. We love you. Cause look, um, and I'll say this to preachers if you're listening, and y'all, uh, if you give out, pour out. Your, 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 your love all to people. If you pour out more than you get in, it's like gasoline in a car. That's 
That's right. If you burn more gas mm -hmm. or more fuel than you put into your car, you have what's going to happen sooner or later? You're, You're going to run out of Okay. Gas. That's right. And so even the, the encourager mm -hmm. right. needs to be encouraged. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. It strengthens me. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I just wanted to kind of yeah. add that in as a little sidebar right there. That's right. Come on. God is good. All the time. So sometimes all it takes is simply listening and speaking a word of comfort. comfort. Mm -hmm. A prophet speaks to console those. Of course, this is also the responsibility of every believer. Mm -hmm. Who's every believer? Us. Amen. Thank you. Who comforts us in all our tribulations? Who comforts us in all of our tribulations? That's right. The Father of mercies. Well, somebody read that. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. And then 4. Verse 3 and 4. Can someone please read that? Second Corinthians, first chapter, 3 and 4. The Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Mm. So as God comforts you. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 He's the Father of mercies. Yes, sir. And I'm telling you, grace and mercy is why we're here today. Amen. Yes. And he's the God of all comfort, mm -hmm. who comforts us in our tribulation. Doesn't he do that? I wish I had a witness that, that, that know that God will comfort you in your tribulation, yes, in your pain, in your hurt. He will comfort you. Yes, he will. Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. And look, so that this is why he does it, so that we may Thank be able God. to comfort those who are also in tribulation. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. With the comfort, what the, well, where am I going to get it? It's with the same comfort with, with you yourself was comforted by God. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. God, thank you. Now, here's something, Louis really people. God wants us to be good stewards okay. of our hurt and our pain. Yes. Hallelujah. I feel like that didn't resonate with yes, someone. Did. God wants you to be good to a good steward of, our hurt of your hurt and, and your pain. Hallelujah. No one really knows the heartache and grief of losing a cherished loved one. Ooh, right. Unless they've experienced it. Yeah. Come on yeah. now, Pastor. Don't no one knows the pain of divorce unless they have gone through it. Yeah. Yeah. No one knows the parental pain of losing a child yeah. unless they've experienced it. Many of us have been through some of these things. And watch this. God expects us to give others the same comfort he gave us. Hallelujah. So what do, what do I mean by being stewards, good stewards over your hurt and your pain? You understand that God allowed you to go through those things and he brought you out of those things so that you can give comfort to somebody who may be going through what he brought you out of. You're right, you're right, Pastor. Can I get a witness? Right, yeah. Don't yeah. just take, you know, all the pain and all that stuff that you went through and all the hurt don't just take it and throw it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Use the essence of all of that to reach back and encourage somebody who may be going through the same thing you're going through. Yes, Amen. 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 Be willing to share your pain. Come on, Pastor. Be a good steward of your hurt. Be willing to share your hurts and your pain. Because I'm telling you, one word of comfort it can, can help somebody who's going through the same thing that you came out of. And you cannot really tell me that you know exactly what I'm going through unless you've been through what I'm going through. Thank you. Come on, Pastor. You can empathize with me and maybe even sympathize with me. But I'm talking about somebody who could get in there and understand yes. what it is to lose a child. What it is to, to lose a mother. What it is to lose a father. Thank you, Jesus. Remember on the day that 3,000 people were saved uh, in, in the book of second chapter of Acts when the day of Pentecost was fully coming and the Spirit fell and the Holy Ghost fell on the church and the church was birthed? Remember that? Mm -hmm. The gift of tongues. Amen. Uh, <coughs> I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm jumping way ahead of myself. 
the Holy Ghost had rested on them. Right. And on. It, it gave them, as the Spirit gave them utterance, Teach they that. spoke. And so on that day, 3,000 souls were saved. Come on, Pastor. And the gift of tongues was for the purpose of proclaiming the gospel mm -hmm. to unbelievers mm -hmm. in a language the disciples had not learned. Come on, Pastor. Teach. It was used to communicate the gospel to unbelievers mm -hmm. in their own language. Teach, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Because all Teach. that other stuff. Come on uh, now. Yeah, where that, where that stuff truth. come from? Yes. Paul described the purpose of tongues. How did he describe it in 1 Corinthians 14 and 22? 1 Corinthians 14 and 22. Can someone please stand and read that? Okay. Tongues are for unbelievers outside the church and pre preaching for believers in the church. Mm. Now go back, Brother uh, White, I mean, excuse me, Brother Smith, and read where it begins, Paul describes the purpose okay. of tongues as. All right, therefore, there, yeah, therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Okay, so now we have love is greater than uh, prophesying, which is for believers, and love is greater than tongues, which is for unbelievers. Come on, man. Tongues are for believers outside the church, and preaching is for believers in the church. All right, teach, Pastor. If you don't believe me, go, go, you know, you read it, come on your own time for time's sake here. It's all right there, 1 Corinthians 14, verses 22 through 25. Read it. Tongues will cease. Amen. All right. Because in eternity, the gospel will no longer be needed to be preached nor heard. Because everybody in heaven is going to be a believer. Come on now. Amen. Because you can't go to heaven if you're an unbeliever. Yeah. So that's why tongues are going to feed or cease. But what's going to continue? Love. Love is going to continue. What Ooh. you say, Pastor? Love. Boy, well, you preach it Thank you, Lord. Teach Thank you, Lord. Right. So love is more important than prophesying. Love is more important than tongues. Right there. That's right. And then finally, love is more important than knowledge. Hallelujah. And the word knowledge is gnosis, or gnosis, gnosis, the, the, the gnostics were those who were well learned and had a lot of knowledge in the word. More, more, love is more important than knowledge. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me go quickly to explain that. Yes. The word translated knowledge, gnosis, means a seeking to know. Somebody say a seeking. A, a seeking. seeking. An inquiry. Or an investigation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Especially an investigation or uh, inquiry of spiritual truth. When someone teaches God's word in a way that consistently brings out wonderful spiritual truth or applications, that person probably has the gift of knowledge. All right, Pastor. Sure you're right. That person. Sometimes you people say I have the gift of knowledge. You do. When you say when someone teaches God's word in such a way that consistently brings out wonderful spiritual truths truth. or, applications. or applications, like how do I use this for my life? That's right. Come on. That Pastor. person probably has the gift of knowledge. And I, Amen. You know, you I said people normally say that, but I know I have the gift of knowledge. You do. Amen. And I'm talking about the spiritual gift of knowledge. I'm not just talking about my, I'm, I'm just smarter than everybody. I'm talking about right. the spiritual right. gift of knowledge right. that he gives to people who can just break it down in such a way. That we can understand. Wow, yes, yes. Thank you. Will you do that? And thank you. Thank you, Sister Barnes. You do but that. But you know what? That gift will vanish away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in heaven. Because in heaven, we won't need Bible teachers. Come on now, Pastor. Ain't going to be no Bible study in heaven. You already do it. Come Ain't going to be no need of knowledge. Jesus himself is the knowledge. Can I get a witness? Amen. He is the living word. Ain't no need to, if you want to study, you want to have Bible study, just go study Jesus when you're in heaven. Say, Lord, right. I just study you for a minute. That Bible study. That's study right. me because I am the living word. That's right. I am the bread of life. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on now, Pastor. We won't need that in heaven. I know I'm right. Somebody right. give me. Habakkuk 2 and 14. 
Habakkuk 2 and 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Yeah, so the earth, when did he say the earth? earth? The earth will be filled with it as Mother White, as God reveals himself. Amen? Yeah. But we can't take too much of that. All right now. You see, the glory of the Lord refers to his special and powerful presence with his people. And a glimpse of God's glory can be seen uh, at the completion of the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent in Exodus 40 and 34 because the glory of the Lord had filled it. Another glimpse of God's glory or presence is seen later when Solomon's temple was completed. Can someone read 1 Kings 8 and 11? 1 Kings 8 and 11. Uh, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Amen. Right. So that little piece that he's revealing to us down here, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. it won't be nothing in comparison nothing. when we see Jesus Hallelujah. in the fullness of his glory. Can I get a witness? We can't, sometimes we can't even take it that much here, yeah. amen. When he got moving Hello. in the church on Hello. Sunday, ooh, Lord, I Hello. just got, Hello. I don't know how much more I can take. Come Hello. on, Pastor G, please. Hello. You know, it's the glory of the Lord. So he gives us a little bit. He, he let Moses see the tail end of his glory. He just said, look in the crack or the cleft of the rock. Because don't look on me, amen, because you won't live. Because you can't stand right now to see the fullness of my glory. So God is so loving that he gives us a little glimpse of his glory. But it'll make you sleep all Sunday afternoon, won't it? It'll make you leave here and want to go right to bed because you done seen a little bit of his glory. Imagine seeing him in the fullness of his glory. Amen. As long as we live on this earth, we cannot have the knowledge of God's glory. All right. Just a little bit. Little dab will do it. Little dab will do it. Yes, it will. The need for further knowledge of God and his glory will vanish away. Yes. Because the earth will be filled with it like air fills the earth today. Thank you, Jesus. See, what you read, uh, Deacon Ms. Patterson, in the block of 2 and 14 was a prophecy. Now watch, read it again. And you'll see how different it is once you read it again, understanding it's a prophecy. She's talking futuristic. Go ahead. Okay. For the earth will be filled with knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2 14. Have you ever been to the beach and you see how, how the water covers cover that ocean? Uh -huh. yes. It covers it, don't it? Yes. The waves come in, they go out, and so yes. they got high tide, low tide. Amen. It covers it. Covers it. Amen. 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 And the new earth. The earth, the earth will be filled. With his glory. Yes. As the waters covers the sea. The sea. Amen. Amen. So we won't have any need. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. For the knowledge of God and his glory, that's going to vanish away because it, the earth is going to be filled with it. Mm. So in heaven, we won't need more knowledge of God. Any more than the sea, sea needs more water. Do the sea need more water? No. And in heaven, we won't need more knowledge of God. Because it is, because it is full. But love will continue. Hallelujah, God. So love is more than prophecy. prophecy. Mm -hmm. Love is more than tongues. And, knowledge. and love is more than knowledge. Than knowledge. And we thank God. Yes, we do. Thank you. Amen. And so it translates into this, Paul is really saying, for strong relationships, I'm telling you how powerful and how strong and how important love is. Love is powerful than prophecy. Yeah. Love is powerful than the gift of prophecy. Love is powerful than the gift of, of tongues. Love is prophecy more powerful than the gift of knowledge. 
What uh, 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 profit is me if I have all of those gifts and I have not love? But the love is God. And I can't say that I have God if I don't have love. Come on now. Something ain't right. No matter how the great the gift of prophecy uh, dwells up in me, or the gift of tongues come out of me, or the gift of knowledge comes out of my mouth. Amen? If I don't have love, I'm just a tinkling glass. I'm just like somebody just making noise. And so are you. That's right. Come on. Tell us. So, Lord, teach me how to love. Yes. Teach me how to love the way you want me to love. Teach me how to love the way unconditionally. Yes. Teach me. And he will. he will. But he may, one of the ways he may teach you is, is he may put somebody in your path. Come on. That's unlovable. What you say? Pastor? That's your test. Teach, Pastor. Amen. Yes, you're right. That's your test. That's Amen. 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 All right. Oh, here they come again. Here they come. Here come your test again. Wow. What you gonna do with it? Wow. Amen. 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 What you gonna move in? How, how you gonna Amen. move? Amen. You say you love me. Right, Here's your test. Here's your test. <laughs> because if you say you love me and don't say you and don't love your brother or your sister you used to every day, Prove it. say you're alive. So folks who like you know you, you all you know you evangelical and you this and you that and you just you know all of this you deep in religion and all that you got grandiose churches and grandiose buildings and facilities amen it's like empty tombs if love don't dwell there come on now. come on somebody you cannot be Christian and racist at the same time come on now Say that back. you fooling yourself yes you are. Amen. And sometimes you go to some of these churches and they will look at you funny if you ain't, you know, what you want to be here. Yeah. That's right. But they love that Jesus ain't in here. Can I get a witness? Because if Jesus was in there, you wouldn't even see my color. You wouldn't even see my race. You would see another child of God or an unbeliever, amen, who needs God. Come on now. And you would love me. So let us always be mindful, amen, that. God is love. Hallelujah, Pastor. And I thank God for that. Somebody need to hear that. I mean, I maybe even on social media, you know, I'm just sick of all of this foolishness. You know, you, you know, you, y'all saying even Trump is like sent from God. You know, no, 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 no. Because you're supposed to love people. You're supposed to have compassion on people. You're supposed to look out for people. Yes. They're cutting everything. Yes, everything. Amen. Yes, yes. And, and, and you can't tell me that those, those, those white nationalists love people. No way. Not them brothers, not them guys that gathered in um, um, Charlottesville. That's right. And Trump called them good people. Yeah, come and on. And they were talking about killing us. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Or the rise of the Klan yes. that are even bold enough now to come into churches. That's right. And try to attack people. Come on. Because of, we're black. Right. Tell the truth. Amen. What Jesus are you serving? You ain't serving the Jesus that I'm serving. Because the Jesus that I'm serving say, love. love. And how could you say you love me and you don't love your brother and your Come sister who you see love. every day? Love. So let that be an indictment Thank you. on those who claim they have Jesus, but they can't because they're not operating in the way that God operates. Come on now. And love is the essence of God. Tell the truth. Amen. 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 Boy, you sure teach tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So go on with our conclusion begin this fast. In conclusion, love is more important than prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. Mm. Love is the most important thing in the believer's life because it is only one thing, only thing that can improve our relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ and with everyone else. Love is the most important thing because it is the essence of the eternal God. Therefore, it never ends. God is love. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless you. Good job. Thank you, Pastor. To God be the Lord. Thank you all for joining us. God bless you. I need that, Pastor. Thank you.